In the swinging 60s, Yvette Vickers wowed audiences with her ravishing beauty and show-stealing on-screen presence. As an iconic starlet, she forever left her mark on Hollywood, known primarily for her roles in B-movies and her magnetic allure. But beneath her glamorous facade lay a tragic tale that unfolded in the years that followed her peak fame. Join Facts First as we present, She Was Gorgeous in the 60s, But Yvette Vickers Died Tragically. Vickers' Career – More Ups Than Downs Yvette Vickers, born Yvette Iola Vetter on August 26, 1928, was an actress, pinup model, and singer. Her striking looks and unmistakable talent propelled her into the spotlight at an early age. Yet beneath all the glitz, neon lights, and success was a complex and tragic story. Her journey into entertainment began in Kansas City, Missouri, where she was raised in a family deeply connected to the world of jazz. Her father, Charles Vetter, was a renowned jazz musician, and Yvette often accompanied her parents during their performances, experiencing the thrill of live music from an early age. After enrolling at UCLA to study journalism, fate intervened when she discovered her passion for acting during a class. Intrigued by the craft, Yvette changed her major to drama and ventured into television commercials. Embracing her newfound love, she decided to pursue a career in acting and moved to New York City where she became the face of white rain shampoo advertisements. But her heart remained set on the allure of the silver screen, eventually leading her back to California. It was there she made her mark on the industry, starting with a brief, uncredited appearance in the 1950 film Sunset Boulevard under her birth name, Yvette Vetter. Her first credited role came in James Cagney's directorial debut, 1957's Shortcut to Hell. Her career gained momentum with her role in the 1958 cult classic Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, where she played Honey Parker, the town floozy who engages in an affair. Her performance solidified her status as a memorable figure in sci-fi B-movies. This success continued with her role as Liz Walker in 1959's Attack of the Giant Leeches. While Yvette's film roles began to diminish in the following years, her allure remained as she was selected as Playboy's Playmate of the Month in July of 1959, luring in readers with her undeniable beauty. Around this time, her image graced the pages of several other men's magazines, cementing her status as a sought-after pinup model. Despite the changing landscape of the entertainment industry, Yvette continued to pursue her passion, making appearances on various TV shows, including One Step Beyond and Bat Masterson. She showcased her musical talents as a singer as well, releasing the jazz tribute album A Tribute to Charlie and Maria in the 1990s. She found joy in connecting with fans, and her presence at the Toronto Classic Movie Festival in 2005 demonstrated her enduring impact on audiences. Her passion for film extended beyond the screen, as she participated in audio commentary tracks for DVD releases, including the 2007 version of Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. Yvette experienced the highs and lows of love and marriage, she married three times, and throughout her life she had relationships with other notable figures, including a recurring romance with Cary Grant and a long-term connection with actor Jim Hutton. Tragedy creeped in. As the years passed, Yvette's life took a tragic turn. Those close to her observed a gradual descent into paranoia and hoarding, leading to a reclusive lifestyle. Her home, once a symbol of glamour, became inundated with toxic black mold reflecting the neglect and isolation that had befallen her. Friends and acquaintances expressed concerns over her well-being, noting her increasing suspicions of being stalked. Her once vibrant and outgoing personality seemed to dim as her mental state deteriorated. The shocking discovery of Yvette Vickers' badly decomposed body in her L.A. home in 2011 sent shockwaves throughout the entertainment industry. Although initially unidentified, authorities quickly confirmed the body to be that of the 82-year-old former actress. The circumstances surrounding her death and the mummification of her body were deeply unsettling, raising questions about the extent of her seclusion and the tragic end to her life. Neighbors who knew little about her private life expressed surprise and sadness at the morbid circumstances surrounding her death. Hugh Hefner was heartbroken. When news reached Hugh Hefner about Yvette Vickers' death, it was a poignant reminder of the passing of an era. Reflecting on their shared history, 
Hefner acknowledged the scandalous nature of Vickers' Miss July 1959 centerfold, which featured her reclining on a sofa, exposing her bare behind. Later in that interview, he recollected the concern raised by the magazine's lawyer at the time, who feared the photo would land them in hot water. But Hefner stood firm, refusing to change the Playmate section. More than five decades after this episode, Hefner received an unexpected message about Vickers, this time a tweet informing him of her demise. The former Playmate and once B-movie queen had been discovered in her home in a mummified state, having passed away without anyone's knowledge for what could have been close to a year. At 82, she had lived a full life, but her final years were marred by seclusion and a lack of close connections. For Hafner, Vickers' story served as a sobering reminder of the transient nature of fame and the sometimes harsh realities that lie behind the altar of stardom. While Playboy magazine may have had a pivotal role in launching her career and had shared in her success, the circumstances of her final years spoke volumes to the complexities of human existence and the importance of genuine human connection. Vickers' death shook the world. As news of her passing spread, those who had crossed paths with the once vibrant actress and pinup model shared their memories and thoughts on the tragic end to her life. Tom Weaver, a horror film historian who had interviewed Vickers and collaborated with her on the audio commentary for the 2007 DVD release of Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, expressed his grief and shed light on her declining years. Weaver remembers Vickers as a funny, sweet, lovable lady and noted her struggles with paranoia and alcohol, which led her to distance herself from close friends. Margaret Netzel, an operations manager at the Roy Rogers and Dale Evans Happy Trail Children's Foundation, fondly reminisced about her nine-year friendship with Vickers. She recalled the glamorous woman who still exuded charm and beauty even in her later years. Margaret spoke of their lengthy phone conversations, during which Vickers expressed her gratitude for their friendship and shared memories of their times together at the film festival. Vickers' ex-husband, Don Prell, a jazz musician who had been briefly married to her in the 50s, expressed his shock and sadness at the circumstances surrounding her passing. He reminisced about their marriage and the ambitious spirit that drove her acting career. Prell remembered Vickers as someone who was determined to be an actress, pursuing auditions with tenacity. He spoke of her ambition and talent, which fueled her desire to make a mark in the industry. The wider Hollywood community, although largely unaware of Vickers' secluded life in her later years, shared in the collective sense of loss as well. Yvette Vickers' death prompted a broader conversation within the industry about the importance of support networks, mental health awareness, and the challenges that can arise when the spotlight fades. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know about the tragic end of Yvette Vickers? Let us know in the comments section below.